Welcome to Best of Reddit. Be sure to subscribe as we upload new content daily. First up, my manager is physically and emotionally abusive so I get her undercover bossed and fired. One summer I was working as a server at a well-known pizza restaurant. It was in a small tourist town so it was amazing money and as a university student, that was all that mattered to me. This job was so horrible that I would go home wanting to quit, count my tips, and decide I could put up with it for one more day. The reason it was so horrible was because of the manager, Tracy. Tracy was hot-headed, irrational, a liar, a manipulator, and overall a terrible human being. I watched her terrorize the other servers and kind of kept my head down to avoid it. Examples of her being awful, she once screamed at me because the entire restaurant didn't have cutlery on the tables, because the restaurant physically didn't have enough and she was too cheap to order more. I was in the middle of filling drinks for a table when she made me stop and go into the kitchen to run the dishwasher. She then yelled at me because that table didn't have full drinks. This all happened in front of a guest who ended up saying something to Tracy about her behavior. After Tracy left the guest assured me that she was going to be reporting her once another server was running her food. Tracy physically grabbed the server by the arm and pulled her back into the kitchen because that server didn't run the ticket before hers. They got into a screaming match and the cops were called. The server sent me photos of her bruised arm the next day. Tracy played the cops like a fiddle and was like, that never happened, and batted her eyelashes. I'm not sure how she got away with that. My sister was the hostess and was only making $12 a week in tip out. The other servers and I did the math and my sister should have been taking home $40 a night. Ironically, Tracy had a new boat and a new truck. My sister messed up, I don't remember how, and Tracy took me into the back of the restaurant to scream at me. We were out there for a full 15 minutes before the supervisor told her they needed me back. This supervisor was an angel and she comes back into the story a bit. This was a while ago, and I'm sure I'll think of more, but for now I will continue with the story. Tracy's reputation in the town was awful. The locals would not eat there because of her. In a small community, everyone had a story about her. I would get sympathy when people found out where I worked. So that tells you just how bad it was. Supervisors told the franchisees about how bad the working conditions were, but every time they would investigate she would turn into a completely different person. She was kind and helpful and working for that side of her wasn't so bad. But when they weren't there the working conditions were awful again. It seemed like they would never catch her in her natural element. The revenge part of my story began on my last day of work. We had a health inspection and failed so I knew Tracy would be particularly awful that day. I looked at the angel of a supervisor and told her that if Tracy screamed at me then I was walking out. The supervisor said she wouldn't blame me and didn't know why I had put up with it for so long. So anyways Tracy gets in and of course she starts yelling at me until I start crying. I finished my last table and walked out, taking my sister with me. Down two staff members, the restaurant was in trouble. We drove by it 30 minutes later and there was a line up out the door because there was no hostess seating people. Tracy had to seat people and serve my section. When I got home I messaged all the staff that had quit over the summer. I told him that I was whistleblowing and that they should too. The girl that was physically assaulted ended up writing a letter and sending photos of her bruised arm. My letter ended up being two pages long, single-spaced, and included everything I've mentioned, with emphasis on her having two different personalities when the franchises were there. A few months later my sister got a message from the dishwasher saying that Tracy got fired and the angel supervisor took her position. Because of that, I decided to go back the following summer. I was hired immediately. While working there I discovered the results of my actions. The restaurant was rated the lowest in the country under Tracy's management. This, coupled with the whistleblowers and the civilian complaints resulted in serious investigation. I don't remember how high up in the company he was, but a higher up ended up going to the restaurant under the intent that he was a new supervisor coming to help because she was short-staffed. He observed her behavior for two weeks. 
After the two weeks he told her, here's the step-by-step -step plan of how we're going to fix the restaurant. Her response was, who the f do you think you are? I guess when he told her, the expression on her face was priceless. I wish I saw it. Anyway she obviously got fired and is now working at a fast food pizza place in the same town. The place is always empty because the locals still actively boycott her. Moving right along, next story, almost make me infertile. I'll ruin your relationships. A long time ago I was a young man in an all-boys secondary school, I was about 14 for any international readers, and my friends and I were regularly bullied by a large group of older guys. Being typically nerdy boys we were prime candidates for bullying, the only saving grace was that we were quite a large group ourselves so no one person was targeted more than any other. Unfortunately that didn't matter as the bullying was brutal. On our school grounds there was a small cabin that belonged to the local Boy Scouts that we used to hang out around on our lunch break. One day we had a run-in with the bullies when they tried to steal our football. For daring to not hand it over I was singled out for punishment, so I was grabbed by four of them, one each grabbing an arm and a leg and carried round the corner to a small courtyard with a flagpole in the middle. After a few punches for struggling I was swung backwards and forwards a few times before being swung legs apart and full force into the pole. Any attempts to describe how painful that was wouldn't do it justice. Thankfully one of my friends had made a run for a teacher and they were spotted coming towards the group by a lookout before they had chance to take another swing and they dropped me and legged it. I was carried to the school office nauseous and in tears and my mum was called. She found me with an ice pack between my legs and ghoulies the size or oranges. As she was talking to the receptionist and teacher my friends ran up to me and passed me a mobile phone. I was confused as I didn't own one and it was at a time when they weren't nearly as common as they are now and they didn't even have games on them yet. It was an early model Nokia with an LCD screen. I looked at my friend and asked whose it was. He told me one of the bullies had dropped it as they ran off and he thought that I should have it as a small way of getting back at him. I took the phone and left with my mum. That evening I was in my bedroom feeling sorry for myself and I'd forgotten about the phone in my blazer pocket until I heard it go off. I took it out and saw he'd received a text message from his girlfriend. This was before phones had sophisticated locks and the bully hadn't set a passcode. I had no idea which bully had owned the phone but I had his name now at least. I decided to mess with him. I was off school the next day, but when I went back in I talked to my friends about it and we came up with a plan. One of my friends with a mobile phone was going to message him pretending to be a guy he'd met recently and we were going to make it look like he'd been having a relationship with him and meeting in secret. We carried on sending messages for the rest of the week and I was also replying to his girlfriend, although I deliberately made my replies shorter and less intimate than they had been before I got hold of the phone. I'd arranged for my bully to meet his girlfriend in the local town that Saturday but was planning to stand her up, obviously, whilst simultaneously having my friend text the phone about ditching her to go over to his instead. I replied agreeing and said I'd tell her I couldn't make it. I didn't. I'd waited in town where we were supposed to meet and saw a girl walk up and wait for a bit. She then got out her phone and typed a text. The phone went off in my pocket. I left it alone. She waited a few more minutes and texted me again. This time I walked around the corner out of sight and messaged her back asking who this was. She flipped out and shouted at me for messing her around. I told her that I had found this phone on the floor of the bus station in that town and if she knew the owner I'd come and give it to her so she could give it back to the owner if she was nearby. She told me where she was and I waited five minutes before walking around the corner and looking around for her. Eventually through texting we found each other and I gave her the phone. She thanked me and we went our separate ways. On Monday I told my friends that we'd pulled it off and we just had to wait and see what happened. It wasn't long into the week when gossip started spreading through the school. The bully's girlfriend had read his messages it seemed and had dumped him for having a gay affair. On top of that she'd done it by going to his house on Sunday and calling him out in front of his parents, who it turns out, were not fans of that sort of thing at all. 
When he denied it she pulled out the phone and read out message after message. His claims he lost it over a week ago were ignored and I was not suspected. In response his parents pretty much disowned him and he was only saved by his uncle who was a little more understanding. He lost contact with a lot of his friends as his uncle's house was a lot further away so hanging out after school or at the weekend was almost impossible and his preference for men was so well known by now that no girl seemed interested. As far as I know his parents never took him back and he moved to London to go to university to escape his reputation at home. I had only expected to break him and his girlfriend up but that was an unexpected bonus. I'd say it went too far but having your nuts smashed off a flagpole tends to harden you to the plight of your bully. And last but not least, real estate agent raises the price of house after we already paid our application fee. My girlfriend and I were looking for place to live in a new city where she had just accepted an internship that didn't pay but would hopefully open big opportunities in the future. I travel for work so it's easy for me to live anywhere. We looked and looked but there was nothing in our price range so we increased a few hundred dollars and finally found a house. It was a bit pricey for what it was, but we weren't finding any better places. The lease term was written as one or two years. We went ahead and submitted an application, which we were pretty confident about since we have good credit, and my job pays pretty well. We specified that we wanted the one-year lease as her internship was only one year long. So a few days go by and we hear back from the agent, our application was accepted but the owner wants $150 more rent than was advertised, per month, since we were only wanting to sign the one-year lease. I mentioned that it seemed unfair that she had taken our $100 application fee before telling us about this price increase, but I kept it pretty civil since I didn't want to burn a bridge for the only viable option we had. She assured me condescendingly that this was perfectly legal and that the owner was entitled to it since he might have to go through the rental process again in a year, and since the rental market was so tight, they could do whatever they wanted, and she was right. We had no other options. So I told her that I was sorry and that I would call her back after discussing with my girlfriend. We were so frustrated. The place was so expensive for what it was, especially considering the condition that it was in. It really was tiny. The bedrooms were about 10 feet by 10 feet, which made me feel a little claustrophobic, and the walls were very dirty from the former tenants who apparently had a couple big dogs living inside. There was literally dirt and grease smeared around the walls on the entire interior at about the height of a large dog. The yard was overgrown and trashed but the lease stated that tenant would be responsible for all landscaping and even specified that we had to keep the lawn in good condition, the lawn was about two foot high, completely dead weeds. All of this we convinced ourselves that we could deal with, scrub the walls and paint, get a lawnmower off Craigslist and pony up the water bill for resurrecting the lawn. Be minimalistic with our possessions. Hopefully the new paint would take care of the lingering dog smell. We had paid $50 each for the application fee and now felt as if we had been bait and switched, but had no other good options and our deadline was coming up fast. My girlfriend was crying and we both felt like homeless misfits that were terrible at life. I couldn't sleep in our hotel that night but when I pulled up my bookmarked Craigslist housing searches I saw something new. A place that looked nice, and was about $500 cheaper than the house actually inside our original price range. I cautioned myself that it was probably a scam but sent an email anyways and in the morning got a phone call from a nice old man. I set up an appointment and it was great, spacious, clean, and much cheaper. The landlord liked us and we signed a lease the same day. We felt so lucky and happy. We were still angry about the other house. The agent had taken our $100 and raised the price on us, probably because she knew how tight the rental market was in the area and that we may not have other options. It had been just one day since she informed us about the $150 monthly price increase. I typed an angry email about how we were bait and switched, etc. but knew that it probably wouldn't get us our $100 back and that they would probably barely even read it. I asked my girlfriend if I should send it. She then came up with a brilliant plan for revenge, do nothing. First I deleted the email without sending it, and we moved into our new place. 
A few days went by and I got a text message from the agent of the other house asking if we were still interested. I replied that we were still very interested and that we had gone on a trip but would be back in a week or so and would meet up to sign the lease then. She replied that since we were well qualified that would be fine as long as we were sure we wanted the place. So we started settling into our new place and enjoying ourselves. About 10 days later I received a call from the agent who seemed to have forgotten about us until then and she was frantic about getting the lease signed. I made up excuses. My girlfriend was very ill. We need a few more days. We are still 100% interested and I will call her on Monday to set up a meeting. On Monday I typed up an email. Sorry but we decided not to move in after all. Thanks anyways. My girlfriend and I smiled nervously together as we shot the email off. The phone rang almost immediately, it was the agent. I exchanged glances with my girlfriend and answered it, putting her on speaker phone. She was very upset that she hadn't shown her place for over two weeks and that her well-qualified tenants were dropping out. She pleaded with me to reconsider. What if I dropped the price back to the original price in the ad? She asked with desperation heavy in her voice. I pretended to think about it. I looked over at my girlfriend and she was silently laughing and hiding her face in her arms, overcome with emotion. I could feel the tension on the line as the agent hung on my next words. Yeah, sorry, no. I cheerfully declined. The agent was distraught. I hung up. My girlfriend's plan had worked perfectly. We felt avenged. Next time maybe she'll think twice before bait and switching.